guys, this is Joyce from Enjoy Scrap and Chew. Today I'm here with Faber Castell Design Memory Craft and I'll be creating this art journal. I wanted to create like an undersea type of a look. Here I have a journal and I'm using the matte medium uh, to stick uh, two of the pages together because this is a little bit on the thin side. So I'm putting uh, the Faber Castell Design Memory Crafts uh, gel medium all over and I'm going to attach them together like so. Now I'm going to uh, use the Faber Castell Design Memory Crafts gesso. I'm going to put gesso all over this page. That will make our paper non-porous and um, it will accept the ink really well and we can have uh, some time to move things around. So after I've done that, making sure to do the spine area as well. I'm going to uh, put this off to the side so it'll dry. And in the meantime, I'm going to be doing some stamping. Here I have uh, tissue paper as well as a watercolor cardstock. I wanted to uh, use these uh, Designs by Rin uh, Water Effects stamp set. But I wasn't sure if I wanted to stamp it right onto the journal yet because I wanted to create a background for it first. So I decided to go ahead and stamp these on the tissue paper. And I'm using a rocker block to do this because this is an unmounted stamp. And I feel that I feel like I get a better uh, impression with these blocks. So I'm choosing different ones here and just randomly just stamping some of the stamps. I'm stamping more than uh, what I've used. These uh, stamps are very detailed water droplets. So now I'm back and I'm going to work on my background. I'm using three different colors. I'm using the metallic melon gelatos at the bottom. The middle is snow cone gelatos and the top is the boysenberry gelatos. You can see I'm using a baby wipe to go ahead and uh, blend them out. Again, because we've put a gesso on top, the blending uh, makes a lot easier. Even uh, without the gesso, these uh, gelatos blend beautifully. So I wanted to add some more color. So I'm putting a second coat here and there. I wanted the top uh, of my page to be a lot darker. And now I just grab the brush and um, coloring, blending out the colors. And I'm adding some more here. This is again the boysenberry gelatos and I put a lot at the top. I kind of um, moved it around with my finger uh, with some water and now I'm spraying it so I can get some drip look. And I'm going to go ahead and dry this. because I want to flip it over and do it again on the other side using the metallic melon gelatos here. Doing the same thing, just a little bit less uh, in between the drips that we already created. Just kind of helping it move a little bit. So I'm going to let that dry. Once it's dried, I grab one of the stencils from the stencil pack 
grabbed the baby wipe and I tried to take off some of the colors. I don't want to remove too much and my baby wipe is not wet. It's uh, semi-dry. I just want to remove some. And you can do this technique uh, because of the fact that we put the gesso underneath it. And now I grab the whip, whip spackle with another stencil. This stencil is from the same pack and um, putting some random dots here and there. I really like the consistency of uh, this paste. It goes on like frosting, really smooth. So I'm using a couple different sizes and ran randomly uh, just putting some here and there. So now I already stamped out um, a fish here and a little seahorse. And I'm going to use the Art Grip Aquarell watercolor pencils to color these images. So the colors I used here is 126, 108, and 115. And this is going to be for the fish. So I want to color the fish like uh, with red and orange and a yellow. So I'm starting off very light. Grabbing a small brush and trying to blend some out. These watercolor pencils are wonderful because they completely blend out. I love that. And you can always layer on more. And you can also grab some like this uh, from the pencil to get a, a deeper color. So I want to color the fins uh, orange and yellow. Uh, it's a great combination of colors. And these pencils come in uh, like a blister pack with uh, the color families. So it's really easy to mix and match with uh, the other lines of the Design Memory Crafts line. So I'm going to continue to do this. This right here is the red. 126, I believe. And I'm putting some darker uh, areas on the fish's body. As well as the same uh, orange and the yellow. So I went off camera and finished coloring the rest. And here is... Um, Pit Artist Pen. This is uh, 110. I'll put all the uh, names and the numbers in the um, supply list so you can always check it out at the Design Memory Crafts uh, blog. And I just grabbed this wavy looking stamp and I'm using the Pit Artist Pens to stamp. These pens are really great. They come in a variety of colors and they have India ink in them. So once they're dried, they're permanent and they're light fast, archival, and acid free. These pens are fantastic. I love them. So now I grabbed another color here. And I'm using this uh, stamp set. It kind of looks like corals. So I wanted to put some at the bottom. And I'm using the red, 127. And just randomly stamping it here and there. It doesn't need to be perfect. Because I just want to kind of give uh, some texture at the bottom. Later on, I'll be stamping it uh, again with the Stamper's Big Brush, my favorite 177. So here I've used the Gelato's 
to uh, stamp the images. You can always use your gelatos to stamp images as well. This is where I go look for my uh, 177, the walnut brown, and I couldn't find it, but I eventually found it. So I'm using this uh, color here, 126, to stamp some more. I waited until um, the gelato is dried. So I want to uh, stamp like different colors of corals at the bottom. So now I'm using the green. This is 167 from the Pit Artist pen. And I'm gonna grab uh, something that kind of looks like a seaweed and I'm gonna stamp it here and there, just randomly in between uh, the corals. So that'll kind of give us the uh, the ground of the ocean look. And now I have this uh, text stamp and I'm using the Stampers Big Brush Pens. This is 199 black. These are fantastic. They have large brushes. They're excellent to stamp on. And again, uh, they have India inks in them so they are permanent once they are dried. They stamp beautifully. So I'm just putting some text here and there. So now I kind of have everything laid out where I want uh, the things. I'm gonna start gluing down my water droplets. And as you can see, because I stamped it on a tissue paper, um, it kind of, uh, you don't really see the tissue paper because it kind of melts on the, with the gel medium in a way. So it becomes translucent. So I really like that. So it looks like I actually stamped it on the book. So I tore off some pieces here and there too because um, I didn't want, uh, I want the water droplets to be um, kind of placed uh, so that it'll look nice. Here I stamped the three fishes and again on a tissue paper. And I also, stamped out this little crab and I'm going to put him at the bottom. I put uh, three. So one here and then one there just randomly. So now I'm going to attach my fish. Again, using the gel medium. And then I actually go over this entire page, covering it with gel medium. So I put my seahorse at the bottom left. Adding some more droplets. So everything is dried once I already put the matte medium. And now I want to go ahead and mix up. I'm chopping up uh, the boysenberry. I want to use the same colors that I've used for the background. And here is a gel medium. And I'm going to crush it. Just press it down with your palette knife. I really love this palette knife. I use this all the time. And I just smushed the gelatos and mixed it with the gel medium. Now I have a blue gel medium. And I really love that color. So I'm going to just uh, put some here and there. Especially where I put the whip speckle. I don't want them to be white. So I'm kind of using, this is a dry brush. So I'm kind of making some... Um, dry brush marks 
starting from the outside to the center because I want to kind of create it to make it look like water. So I'm randomly just placing some here and there. And you can always wipe it off if you make a mistake because we put gel medium on top. Now I'm kind of spraying some water where uh, the whip spackle is because I still want a little bit of the white to show through. And then also we can get that drippage. And I'm dabbing off the water droplets because I don't want them to be completely colored. Because later on I will go in with the Pit Artist pens. So just wiping it off with a napkin. And then once this is dried, I bring out this um, little stencil. It's kind of like, looks like waves. So I'm using um, the same blue Pit Artist pen here, the one, 110. And I'm just tracing the lines. Doesn't need to be perfect, but I just want some type of a guideline so that later on we can um, create that wave water look. So I'm just randomly placing it here and there and just drawing it. making it kind of look even as best as I can. But you can definitely draw this freehand, but um, I am not a really good drawer, so I decided to just use the stencil. It was kind of like cheater method. So here is where I'm shading in the water droplets here using the same blue. And I'm kind of laying down my marker right where the shadow area is and just using my finger to just blend it out. Because we use a uh, matte medium, uh, this we have some time to move the color to give a shading. So these are all the colors that I've used. So now I grab this Stamper's Big Brush White 101 and I'm putting it at the top of the water droplets so that it really uh, gives that highlight. This is a fantastic pen. So I did that for all the bubbles water droplets, bubbles. I went over it a second time. And again, once this is dried, it's permanent. That's what I love about these pens. Sorry about that noise. Um, now I'm using the white. Uh, Instead of the Stamper's Big Brush White, I grab the uh, Pit Artist Pen Black. Uh, this is the, the brush one because I wanted to kind of go around the water droplets. So I wanted a finer point. Now I finished a shading everything off camera. You can see that I've added an extra two seahorse. And I went around the bubbles as well as the fish and um, our whip spackle just to give a little bit more depth. And you can see that I went over the water lines and um, I drew some as well. And uh, with the blue, 110. And I've attached my coat. It says, uh, let the sea set you free. So here are some close-up photos. 
I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please give a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. All the supplies will be listed in the Faber-Castell Design Memory Crafts blog, so go ahead and check it out. I thank you so much and I'll see you soon. Bye!